to answer, but otherwise shut up. Whoa. and welcome back to this week's vlog welcome back to my channel today is an exciting day we are heading cross-country schooling with the lovely maximus who's looking a little bit muddy we do need to clean him up in a sec we are heading to tweezer down our local cross-country venue we are so so lucky to have tweezer down right on our doorstep because the ground is always perfect even after all of this rain we've had our three events that we had planned for april have all been cancelled so max is two events kato's one event because of the rain and the ground which is really really sad but we are heading to tweezer down today to have a lesson with lucinda green aren't we max so we have had a couple of cross-country lessons with lucinda green i don't think any of them have actually ever been vlogs we did vlog one with kato last year so definitely go and check that out if you haven't watched it we are heading there today with you getting you ready for hopefully your first event of the season not sure when that will be i think beginning of may now so i am going to get on get him rush to make him look a little bit presentable and head on our way. It's raining, so I'm gonna to have to put him in the stable and finish sorting him out. So Max is all ready to go. I have given him a groom, I've even trimmed his mane, his tail, his bridal path, because we actually have a really exciting photo shoot in two days time, and they all need a proper tidy up before then. So I thought I'd take this opportunity. We had a little bit of time to give him a proper tidy up. So let's get him loaded and head on our way. Okay guys, so we have just arrived at Tweezerdown, so I'm just getting him tacked up and then I'm gonna get on and get warmed up, ready for my lesson with Lucinda. <laughs> legs down on the fence when it's going to fall off just so the legs come down on the fence lots of riding you've got your seven things you've got your two eyes your two hands your two legs so we're doing that to that ditch to this the... one any way you like over the ditch because the final end is, is skinny then two brushes and then the red roll top at the top of the bank. Don't worry about the one at the bottom, it's not worth it. And your lines, but don't jump in the water because I shan't be there. Yeah. <laughs> that sound good? Yeah. Let's go, somebody. Head up, Ash, you can't see when he's on the bit. So every time you go to slow down, you have a danger point. He's going to chew his chest and he won't be able to see. The bottom half of the eye is the distance vision. Good. He's great when he knows it's Okay guys, so we're just on now. We've had a little warm up, jumped a few little fences. So I think mum just missed that because she was walking up. But Lucinda was just saying with Max, when I check him, because he gets a bit keen and I need to check him, he then drops his head quite low so then he can't see it. 
once he knows the jumps there he does bring his head back up but i think that's why we've had a few little issues that makes sense where he's running out because he's just not quite locked on because as lucinda said once he knows what he's jumping he's very good and locks on so i need to just make sure that he's got, always got his um head up. but overall he's feeling good actually not as excited as the last time we were cross-country schooling so that's good we're just about to jump go in the water and Lucinda said what did you want to do I don't know how he's going to feel about those and she's now found something really scary has she oh yeah <laughs> whoa Good boy, come on. that last bit really nice yeah. right. the reason we're not going to do it again is because i think you want to perfect everything of course everybody does but i'm not going to ask you to do that again because i very rarely do things twice because the horses know where they're going yeah. and other problems come in yeah like yeah i'm off both these horses have done the job they haven't made mistakes both of you had to ride really off the seat of your pants and reacted really fast and the horses actually reacted really fast so whilst you could always make it better, we're not going to make it better over that line. Yeah. Really well done, basically. This is awkward lines. Lots of communication, lots of have you seen it. Beautiful balance, lovely looking. He hasn't any idea what's coming, keep him small. Close it up because we've got 
Love his head when he's looking. Don't put too much pressure, let him take you. Be ready to say, answer the question if you need. Perfect. When he's put a long one in, he's almost bound to put a short one in the next set because he's that pony type of horse. Once he's given you a long one, expect a deep one. It was lovely. I hope you felt happy with it. So Ash, I'm really, really happy with that. I don't feel you could have done anything different. I don't feel you could have got him over first time. It's almost as if he's just l missing a tiny brick in his wall because he did not understand it. We had to dissect the problem. And as soon as he understood it, there's no braver horse in the world. So for me, that was a lack of courage. That was purely saying, mum, I don't get it. And he's a sweet little horse and he absolutely got it. And you were able to then ride him without putting him under pressure. Sometimes pressure helps, sometimes pressure doesn't help. And he's a real sweetheart and he was just great. Okay guys, just walking down to do a few more lines now. So we've just jumped in the water and I'm sure we will put that in of what Lucinda was saying. He just wasn't quite understanding the question with the barrels. Um, you know, he wasn't being naughty, he just didn't understand it. As soon as he understands it, he pops it with, you know, no problems at all, finds it easy, is really bold. It's just that first time if he's not sure of the question, He's just, you know, he questions it a bit, unlike Zeb and Kata who kind of just go for it. Okay, I've got to concentrate now. Ash that you've got here and you're a super partnership you're exactly the right size for each other yeah neither of you got long legs <laughs> but it works it works really well he's, he's he's confident in his ability he's confident in yours just watching him come through the line log pile just sliding down the face of the fence yeah the mum was videoing him and then the corner he didn't and I didn't think he would he didn't really get the corner in time and you had to put in a little one when you go, whoa, there's, that's a fence. And it, you know, when they've slid down the side of a fence and then there's a dark fence, the same color as the dark mud, and yeah. it's very, very narrow, I, I, there's not a lot to aim at. And I thought you did the only thing you could do is just hang in there and keep your weight back and you threw in a little one. Yeah, that's what yeah. Bucketed over. Um, that's a little bit what will happen, I think, with him because he's so sharp in his brain. And he's always looking for the next thing. Yeah. Which we absolutely love. But he just didn't give him some. He could have just done that. Yeah. Maybe you should have just given him that time so that he slid down the fence in front, just to come out of that fence and see it. Good. Yeah. 
that. I think we've just always got to remember, it's such an obvious thing to say, that they have been the force. They are quite unbelievable what they take on when they've no idea where they're going. Yeah. So when you've got a tricky one, which involves a fence, you don't want to jump, but he's very close to it. Do I jump it? Don't I jump it? No, I don't. But then, where's his mind? You know, you haven't got it in that nice, peaceful way that you had it as he came into the, the roof. Yeah. And then he came back to you. Well, it was a tight turn for both of you, wasn't it, inside that? Yeah. But with lovely tweezel down ground and sand, you weren't going to slip over. But if you were on the clay, you'd want to be slower because you did all slightly, didn't you? You felt you slightly scuffled around that yeah. sharp turn to get to the ditch. So this ground, it's okay, but just be, it doesn't matter how many studs you wear, you still have to ride the line for the ground. Yeah. Mud, the mud, if you like, in this case, but it was super. I think what today is doing is just getting us a little bit sharper here. So you know you're riding a very athletic, very good horse, yeah. um, who's also very astute, the way you stopped so quick at those barrels. Boy, you did well, you never moved. That's really encouraging. But you've also got to think a little bit quicker about the prep. Yeah. And I think I'd go back to the to the corner there where he slid yeah. up there. He was a bit too fast and possibly both of you a little fast into the wall, but it was it was good. And then you just didn't quite get no. your act together, did you really? And if he was saying, I want to go home, you should have said, no, we're not going to go home, yeah. we've got something else to do. Because the, the, a wise word was said to me when I was a lot younger than either of you two are now, um, you, you win or lose your fence on the turn. Yeah. And, and that was John Lanny who actually went on to say you win or lose your fence in the show jumping as you land over the fence before. And that really went home. You've got no time to mess about. But I also absorbed this, you win or lose your fence on the turn. So that the turns are really crucial. Yeah. And try to come around them. And Katie, this is something to be thinking of. Try and come around them uh, as near a right angle as you can because we try and smooth our turns at the expense of losing our hind legs. So if we go into our corner and slow down and turn, we have got our hind legs and then we come out and we've got one, two, three, four. Yeah. It's just something kind of fine, a very nice little turn actually. Super. Are you happy? Thank Anything you else much. you need to do? Can I ask a question? Yes. So you know you said like up at the water that he just because he didn't he didn't understand the question he had to break it down do you then think because that's sort of sometimes i feel like in general his cross-country riding he does that is it just get out more to different courses let him see different things i do think you've got a very genuine horse here yeah and therefore i think if he's showing there are holes then as ingrid kim famously said on her webinar it will come and bite you in the butt if you leave out any stages. Now, you may not have had him all the way through his life. I didn't, so... That's, you can yeah. happily blame his past instructors yeah. then, because he needs to have seen an awful lot more of life if barrels yeah. are still upsetting him. Yeah. Bless his but I, I take it, you know, every horse sees a little different. We don't know what they see. And the sun is shining and that can make that sort of thing much worse. And he might do it to you when he particularly will do it. If you're early to go, and there's a small fence out of the water yeah. and it's wooden and as he comes towards it in that last stride that fence will change shape and colour because your splash will go onto it. He can't reason, horses can only associate ideas so all he will see is the fence moves, there's a lion and he'll stop absolutely dead like he did there. Yeah. So you have to be really aware that when a, a fence changes in front of them, which a splash will do, shadows can do it, your own shadow on a fence um, you have to be ready for action, but there's no stopping him stopping. When he stops, he's not going. Yeah. And that's something I can only hope that as he gets more and more confidence in life and in situations that you present him with, and you can do you can do a certain amount of it at home with dodgy looking things. Yeah. That you can get him to jump over the top of. Nothing big. Yeah. Just dodgy, safe, you know. The way. Yeah. But he's also got to have time check out that, that barrel isn't at the kill. Yeah. And that's a fine line with any horse that they are brave but they're careful. Yeah. It's a fantastic horse. But yeah. it takes quite a bit longer sometimes to train them. Okay. Barrels are a bit tricky. <laughs> then let's use them different colours. Yeah. In odd places halfway down a hill. Oh, barrels yeah. again, yes, and they're yeah. gonna come here and they're gonna just surprise it. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. you might find something else in shops it might be witch's hats or something. Yeah. He's just got to learn that life exists, funny things exist. Yeah, yeah. Okay guys, just giving Max an apple. 
He was a very good boy, so just load him up. It has literally just started raining, hailing, I would actually say, so we've got the best of the weather. Um, but obviously we've done a sort of a debrief with Lucinda. Max was absolutely fantastic. I thought a really good pre-event season tune-up. Uh, a few little hiccups with the barrels and the uh, other lady in my group actually just said to me she's going to try and get me some barrels so that would be absolutely fantastic for all of the horses to practice at home. Max was really really good, got quite excited but definitely a improvement from our last cross country schooling session so really really pleased with him. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, please do let me know if you do and you like these style of training videos I can definitely try and do a few more whenever I have lessons with Lucinda or Nick. Um, thank you as always for all of your support. Max definitely wants another apple. I'm going to get him home because I have got to bring in the other horses and Zeb and Kato are going to be happy that it is not very nice weather and then we're going out for dinner. So thank you as always for your support and hope you enjoyed this vlog and we will see you for our next one.